We've been to the ER a couple times now. Gwyneth Paltrow and her fam are living dangerously. Ouch. And we've got the stories that define the week on People in 10. I'm Andrew Belke, bringing you everything you need to know about pop culture right now. We've got 10 minutes, so let's dive right in with the first five. Starting, of course, with the aftermath of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Oprah interview. Although the royal family generally sticks to a never complain, never explain approach, we were expecting a response just due to the massive scale of this interview. Buckingham Palace released a statement just days after it aired, admitting that concerning issues were raised, which will be addressed by the family privately. We know that the royal family and their aides have been in crisis talks as they carefully formulated a response to this interview. A palace source stresses to people that at the heart of this is a family and they should be given the opportunity to discuss the issues raised privately as a family. Meanwhile, Piers Morgan is standing by his controversial comments about Meghan even after his exit from ITV's Good Morning Britain after six years. I don't believe almost anything that comes out of her mouth. Reports say that a complaint was filed to the network on behalf of Meghan. And according to CNN, Megan was less concerned with the personal nature of the comments and more worried about the impact that Morgan's comments could have on others and how it could degrade the seriousness of mental health issues. Morgan made headlines this week when he stormed off the show following a clash with a colleague. You continue to trash her. OK, I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry. No, uh, uh, sorry. So, do you know what? That's pretty You can track. And Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, also reacted to the interview, admitting in part that it was painful to hear just how traumatizing Meghan's life was inside the royal family. So what were the biggest bombshells from that interview? Here are our picks based on your views on People.com. One of the most shocking, conversations about how dark their son Archie's skin would be before he was born. This was a big what moment, even from Oprah. No one has ever accused the palace of something like this before. We still don't know which royal made those comments, but Oprah confirmed it was not Queen Elizabeth or Prince Philip. We also learned Meghan attended a public event just one day after telling Harry she didn't want to be alive anymore. This was a really shocking admission. She went on to claim that no one in the palace was willing to help with her mental health. But there were some sweet moments too. The couple revealed they're expecting a baby girl and viewers even got a peek at big brother to be Archie. And on Monday, Meghan and Harry gave us another glimpse of their son in this new photo from a maternity shoot. Switching gears to more Bachelor backlash this week. I'm so disturbed at what I just watched. Rachel Lindsay, the first black bachelorette who was at the center of the recent Chris Harrison controversy, is criticizing the franchise for airing an emotional conversation between Matt James and his father, who left Matt when he was just a child. When she's saying that she's disturbed, she what she's saying is that she is more concerned about the franchise perpetuating the stereotype of the black absentee father. They don't know how to protect people of color. They only know how to exploit them. She had even asked, you know, who greenlit this episode. Rachel did praise Matt for tweeting about the consequences that negative depictions of black fathers can have when presented without context. Matt also admitted that watching the scene was hard for him. He asked people to watch it with nuance and care and understanding that there are these real systemic issues in play. Matt's bachelor journey will come to an end on Monday night's finale. All right, on to the posts you've been loving this week. We are going Gaga for our first official look at House of Gucci, starring Adam Driver, Lady Gaga, Al Pacino, and Jared Leto. The movie, currently filming in Italy, follows the real life assassination of Maurizio Gucci at the order of his ex-wife, and the casting looks spot on. Meanwhile, Olivia Jade is clapping back. Someone left a TikTok comment wanting to ask her, how's college? Clearly a jab about the college admission scandal and her mom, Lori Loughlin, but they accidentally wrote how's collage instead olivia's response i actually love collaging i'm working on this really <laughs> sick scrapbook that i have to show you guys soon it's chef's kiss yes spell check is our friend and we got a rare look at elon musk's family in this sweet photo with grimes and their son who turns one year old in may now inside this week's people cover story i believe i have a responsibility 
I said this, this quote, to whom much is given, much is expected. Former First Lady Michelle Obama is opening up about giving back and the unexpected blessings she and President Barack Obama found this past year. This time has allowed us to get some stolen moments back with our girls who were supposed to have emptied out of my nest. <laughs> well, they're back and it has been uh, more enjoyable than uh, either Barack and I could have imagined. And she tells us why they always keep it real when it comes to their marriage. What we found is that, you know, we didn't have role models of the hard time. You know, our parents, their generation were taught, you don't talk about marriage and you definitely don't talk about the hard times. A great reminder there, every couple has their ups and downs. Now let's move on to some screen time. I'm here now with Gwyneth Paltrow, actress, author, entrepreneur, and founder of the lifestyle brand Goop. As if she couldn't get any busier, she is now the global face of the new facial injection Zeoman. Gwyneth, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Good. For these final five minutes of the show, I'm gonna ask you five questions. For question number one, you have to give me one answer. For question number two, you have to give me two answers and so on. Let's get started. It's no secret you're an open book when it comes to trying out new beauty trends. And your philosophy on beauty is that women should give themselves permission to do whatever they want to feel good. Now, since you've tried out so many trends, I wanna know what is one beauty trend that you've tried that you wouldn't recommend? That's hard because I sort of feel like everything has its, its benefit. Once I tried color light therapy and maybe it worked, but I didn't, feel very much from it. <laughs> what is color light therapy? I'm not really sure. I was in London, it was a long time ago, and I think there's different kind of lasers with different colors and it's something to do with the chakras and I don't know. I never did it again, let's put it that way. <laughs> Scrolling on your Instagram, you have so many adorable, fun family moments documented on there. Your kids are so cute. Your daughter Apple is your little mini me. But I wanna know, during this period of time where we're spending so much time at home with our families, what are two new things you've learned about your kids? I have learned how resilient they are you know, this was a tough year for teenagers who are so used to discovering who they are by being out in the world and being in social situations. And it was amazing to see them find so much resilience. Also how creative they are in terms of finding interesting things to do to keep themselves engaged and stimulated. Like my daughter started a little consignment store on the internet and my son, he loves skateboarding and fingerboarding. And so he made his own skateboard and fingerboard and he loves also designing the grip tape and making really cool, you know what this is. I, I now know all about grip tape. Um, so yeah. Have you ever gotten on a skateboard? Is that something you do with him? Oh no. Oh God, no. I love to watch him and I love to watch him do tricks, although I cringe at the same time. We've been to the ER a couple times now, but he's he's really committed and he's, he's really getting good at it. So <laughs> he absolutely loves it. But no, I will not be, I'll sit on a skateboard, but not stand up on one. <laughs> We saw that Brad just celebrated a big birthday. So how is he feeling? How'd you celebrate? We actually were able to go skiing, which was amazing. We went with some friends and had such a special time with some people that we really love. And it was so nice to be able to celebrate him. He's the most incredible person. He doesn't like a lot of attention on him. So it was fun to torture him with a ton of love and attention. <laughs> Well, another highlight of Goop is its food recipes. So it's no surprise your Instagram is full of some amazing food pictures, especially of chopped salads. You've professed your love for them in the past, said they're endlessly great. So I wanna know what are your three musts for a good chopped salad? Well, the beauty of them is that you can use up whatever's in your fridge. So I would say a great dressing for sure. I think lettuce is usually the common denominator and a protein. It can be garbanzo beans or chicken or whatever. In addition to running Goop, you're of course an Oscar winning actress. You've accomplished so much in your career. So I wanna know what are four professional achievements that you are so proud of? I did a play in London called Proof 
I was very proud of that production. Making it through the filming of The Talented Mr. Ripley when my father was going through all his cancer stuff and my grandfather too, that was really tough. The Royal Tenenbaums, I'm really proud to be in that movie. That's so funny. Well, it's nice to see you too. And my relationship with Robert Downey Jr., which was obviously forged through all the Iron Man and Avengers movies, I feel like I was able to find like an incredible, lifelong, inspirational partner and friend. When you announced your partnership with Xeomin, you said that beauty is about deepening happiness versus trying to chase youth. So I would love to know what are five things in your life that make you happy? Oh my God, that's so easy. My husband, my daughter, my son, only in that order because it's oldest to youngest. My growing uh, sense of self-acceptance and great food. Gwyneth, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone, to learn more about Xeomin, head to xeomin.com. All right, time's up. See you next Thursday.